now, Brad and I just... Um, yeah. On uh, Saturday, we got uh, Chavez and Cal. Brad and I just got off the phone, and Brad's about a colon, I guess, uh, uh, about uh, Chavez and Kamau, and also Hernandez and De La Hoya. Uh, we have Bo coming up with Holyfield. We have Tyson's second comeback fight coming up. This is all before the end of 95. Frankie Randall's got, some, uh, got a fight. Trinidad, almost any fighter you can think of, uh, uh, has a fight coming up before the end of the year. And, uh, I mean, it, uh, it bodes well for boxing, uh, especially if a Trinidad Corte or Whitaker Trinidad or Whitaker Corte fight is uh, is made before the end of the year, uh, and then uh, and for '96, it's uh, it's unbelievable the fights that can happen. Like I've always said, between 130 and 147 pounds, including Gabriel Reles, Miguel Gonzalez, uh, Orzabek Nazarov, uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, Kostatsu, Frankie Randall, Julio Cesar Chavez. If you're still around after the Kamau fight, uh, Corte, Trinidad, and Whitaker. Ten, 10 fighters, and there are a lot of permutations in terms of fights that can be made between those 10, and a, a lot of good fights can be made. So uh, 96, 95 has been a very interesting year. I think 96 uh, uh, is going to prove to be uh, a, a little bit more interesting even. And the reason I'm kind of talking about uh, the beginning of 96, and we're only in September, is that this, last week was the end, the last episode of my sixth year of Max Unboxing, and uh, this is the first episode, the first installment of the seventh year, the first program of the seventh year of Max Unboxing, the very first one of the seventh year. Uh, like I said last week, uh, coincidentally, uh, uh, unless it's, or, or really it seems uh, ironically, there's some kind of cosmic, uh, co in some kind of cosmic irony, uh, the, the uh, uh, Pernell Whitaker, I stated that, the, that Pernell Whitaker was the best fighter in the world pound for pound in 1989 on my very first show. A lot of people disagreed with me. A lot of people said Tyson back then. I maintained it was Whitaker. And I think uh, history has proven that it was Whitaker. Then uh, for the last six years, I've said, I've uh, always said it has been Pernell Whitaker. And finally, on the last episode of my sixth year, I said that uh, it was the end of an era. Whitaker is two, and Roy Jones is now the best fighter pound for pound in the world. Since uh, last week when I said that, a lot of people have come up to me, Max, you really think Roy Jones is the best already? Who's he beaten? Only James Toney and Bernard Hopkins. Whitaker's wiped out five divisions, and they're right. In terms of their resumes, Pernell Whitaker is already a Hall of Famer, and beyond Hall of Famer, he's already a... Uh, a uh, uh, well, in Bill, Bill James, I think it is Baseball Abstract, he talks about definition A Hall of Famer, definition B Hall of Famer, definition C, A, definition A being one of the best players, he's, he's talking about baseball, ever. Definition B being at his position among the best players ever. So you can apply that same thing to boxing. Definition A Hall of Famer, you can make a case that he's the best fighter ever. Definition B, he's one of the best in his division of all time, C, D, and so forth. Uh, Pernell Whitaker is a definition A Hall of Famer. You can make an argument that he's the greatest fighter who ever lived, uh, certainly the most unbeatable fighter who ever lived. There's no fighter in the history of boxing who had most of, or, or at least 75%, I can't imagine Whitaker has more than 25% of the significant fights total in his career coming up. In other words, most of his significant fights, Whitaker that is, have already occurred, and, uh, has yet to, and Whitaker has yet to be challenged against the likes of McGirt, Chavez, and Azuma Nelson, uh, and even a guy like Vasquez, so much bigger than Whitaker, and Whitaker has yet to be pushed to the limit. The same cannot be said for Sugar Ray Robinson, for Muhammad Ali, for Sugar Ray Leonard, for Willie Pep. All those fighters, by the time they've had, they had their most significant fights, they've been pushed to the limits. In fact, they, a lot of the, uh, all of them had been beaten. Uh, the same cannot be said about Pernell Whitaker. In his most significant fights of his career, and he's had most of them already, he's never been beaten. Having said all of that, and Roy Jones, you can't say that about yet because he hasn't uh, accomplished enough in his career thus far. But pound for pound is not about who's accomplished more, uh, uh, who's proven himself more, or anything like that. Pound for pound is simply about who is the best fighter in the world right now. And right now, Roy Jones is the best fighter in the world, and uh, I'm, a Whitt I'm a Pernell Whitaker fan, and I'm saying Roy Jones is the best fighter in the world right now, because, Whitt now, Whitaker's brought this on himself a little bit. Not, not only has father time eroded some of the skills, Whitaker's 31, but Pernell is fighting at welterweight, and uh, Pernell is a natural lightweight. 
Uh, if you want to talk about Whitaker in lightweight terms, maybe he's still the best fighter in the world because if Whitaker could make the white lightweight limit, there's no one out there to test him. Not De La Hoya or Gonzalez or anyone like that. Whitaker would easily beat any of those guys. But Whitaker's a welterweight now and uh, entrenched in the welterweight division. He's established himself as a welterweight. And it's not only so much that I have to start rating him at welterweight, but when you struggle with a guy like Gary Jacobs, uh, and, and really, he was even at, at times outsped by Gary Jacobs, Whitaker, that is. The skill, it's not that the skills have eroded. It's that the, uh, well, we'll get to the skills in a second, but the, uh, the uh, natural ability, the speed and the reflex are starting, and reflexes are starting to slow down a little bit. And, uh, and, and not, not incidentally, uh, George Benton is not in Pernell Whitaker's corner anymore. George Benton uh, and Pernell Whitaker were like Rooney and Tyson, the perfect combination. And, and Benton should have never left Whitaker's corner. There's been a marked uh, uh, downslide in Whitaker's career since Benton left, meaning the Vasquez and the Jacobs fights. Whitaker's looked much more hittable, much more one-dimensional, and, uh, and uh, less perfect than he used to since Benton left. So a combination of factors have made Whitaker not the fighter he once was, uh, still better than anyone else but Jones, probably. But uh, uh, So when people call up, please, let's not talk about, well, Whitaker's proven he's the best, because I'm not talking about their Hall of Fame credentials. Whitaker's are better than Jones. But for right now, uh, but for right now, uh, uh, Jones is the best fighter in the world. We're going to, while they get this fixed in the studio so we don't get a little outside interference, uh, we're going to get to the lines. 475-1550 line for Max Kellerman. You're on the air. Hello. Max. Yep. Uh, first off, okay. Show, first off, what's your, what's your name? Jim from Manhattan. Okay, love how you doing? Love your show. Thank you. Thank you. You're the most experienced and knowledgeable person on boxing I've, I've ever heard in my life. Appreciate it. Thank you. And that even goes past Bill Gallo. Let's say that again. That goes. You're, you're past Bill Gallo. Bill Gallo. Oh, the Daily News. Past even Bill Gallo. Right? <laughs> yeah. Question yeah, okay. for you. Uh, two things. First off, who did Ron Lyle fight? In like a, it was a five round. Fighting in, in the mid '70s was it Ken Norton? No, George Foreman. It was George Foreman that the, the that blood, the knock, I mean, the knocked down, out of each other the whole way around. George Foreman. And that's the best heavyweight fight you'll that ever see. That to me, I agree with you. Is the best fight I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, incredible. And uh, Foreman. See, it's very interesting. If Foreman had the intangibles in the pre-Ali Foreman, had the intangibles of the post-Ali Foreman. He would have been one of the greatest fighters, one of the very greatest fighters of all time because Lyle put his heart to the test and Foreman passed it with, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say with flying colors because it was a very, very uh, hotly uh, I mean, contested that was a close, close fight. To Rocky. But it, it really did. Foreman looked like he had reserves of super, superhuman reserves of, uh, of strength and, and desire and determination and knocked Lyle out with, if you remember the combination that Foreman knocked Lyle out with, he just started throwing punches. They weren't devastating shots, but it was one after another. I guess he figured, well, I can't take him out with any one shot. Let me just keep throwing punches until he goes down. Trap Lyle in the corner. Must have hit him with two dozen unanswered punches. They didn't look very hard, but they were all landing, and eventually Lyle fell and took the count. Uh, incredible, incredible fight. Second question for you. Roy Jones, moving up in class, moving up a weight? Do you see it happening? I mean, yes, eventually, sure. In the, in the near future, Roy Jones will probably move there's up no, in I weight. Mean, there's no one else to fight. There's no one else to fight up in weight either. I mean, it's, it's true. There happens to be... Uh, Roy Jones missed a very, very, very good era of middleweights by a very little bit. If, if you were to look at Roy Jones's resume right now and seen the names, the following names, let's say Michael Nunn, Mike McCollum, Julian Jackson, John Mugabe, Terry Norris, James Tony and Hopkins, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Reggie Johnson, guys like that, John David Jackson, he missed, he missed a lot of those fights by uh, maybe six months to a year. He missed a Julian Jackson fight. He, uh, this is Roy Jones we're talking about. Missed a uh, 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 Michael Nunn fight. If he would have fought Mike McCollum fight, Reggie Johnson fight, if he would have fought any of those fighters at the right times, right now, Roy Jones would probably be the greatest middleweight of all times in terms of his, re uh, in terms of his resume because no one else in the history of the middleweight division fought a, uh, a, a, if he would have dominated all those fighters. No one else ever dominated a group of fighters like that, and Roy Jones would have dominated all those fighters. So it's sort of unfortunate. He missed a very, very rich, a very thick middleweight division, it, like a deep division, uh, uh, like an NBA team that has a good starting five but also a deep bench. That's what the, the middleweight division was like 
a couple years ago. Now, all of a sudden, you, you look up, a, a Gerald McClellan fight disappeared with Nigel Ben. Nigel Ben doesn't look like he's going to present much of a problem to Roy Jones. So who is there out there? Nobody. It's, it's unfortunate for Jones. Last question for you. How, how, how high up in weight can he go? And still be uh, cruiserweight. I would say stop at cruiserweight. They're Roy Jones could probably give a couple heavyweights a, an interesting time, but uh, well, he he's, he probably he'd run him around the ring. I'd, I'd, I mean, he he's he's what? He'd run him around in the ring. I'd say. I'd say he's running out of. I'm sorry. No, he'd run him around run, the running, ring. Run him around the ring. Heavyweights. I, I don't know. Being hit by a heavyweight's a lot different than being hit by a middleweight. Then again, Michael Spinks was a natural uh, middle. Really started middleweight in the, in the Olympics. Won the gold medal at the Olympics at middleweight, light he natural light heavyweight, and then uh, eventually moved up and uh, won the, the true heavyweight title from Larry Holmes. Roy Jones is a nat started at middleweight, amateur and pro, but really is I say at this point naturally 168 pounds. They say he walks around at about 180. So uh, it se it seems like he he's not much different in terms of the natch, his natural walking around weight than a guy like Michael Spinks. Now, he doesn't have, he doesn't have the height of a Michael Spinks. Or and, the neck. And, or, or, say it again? Or the neck. Well, Michael Spinks' neck was really kind of, uh, didn't look like a shock absorber. Roy Jones, he doesn't look like the type of fighter because he's not as lanky as Spinks that could put on the weight as comfortably as Spinks could. In other words, there's less room to put on weight on Roy Jones. At the same time, even a Roy Jones coming in at 175 pounds, 176 pounds, would probably be favored against any cruiserweight in the world. So that tells you how good the guy is. Max, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Appreciate the call. Excellent call. Thanks a lot. Line one, Max Kellerman. You're on the air. Hello. Brad, how you doing? Brad, how you doing? Yeah, I think I got it wrong in the Chavez fight. I think it's in the 16th, the next. The Ch uh, chavez Kamal uh, fight. Yeah, right. I think I might have got that Brad wrong. and I were discussing that fight uh, before the show. For anyone who's interested. Oh, I said, um, on the phone, right. Talk about Roy Jones. I would go so far as to say there's a distinct possibility that he might go down as the greatest fighter in history. Mm -hmm. You watch him fight, it's like watching a Bruce Lee movie. He is so quick. I've never seen a fighter like this. He's, uh, it's true. When you, when you watch him, you get the distinct impression that you might be watching history in the making in terms of Absolutely. You know, talking about the great. There are very few fighters who, who uh, in terms of natural ability, are in Roy Jones' class. Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson, maybe Sugar Ray Leonard. No, I think, he has, I, think he has, I think he has more ability than those fighters did. I think we're looking at something very special here. It could be. It could be. <laughs> I mean, it could be. But let's, let's uh, this is not to, to get anyone excited and say he's the greatest fighter of all time already. No, not yet. He's that, heading he in that direction. He hasn't proven it yet. No, but he But certainly has not. it looks like he has the potential to be. Um, also, uh, I have to argue with somebody the other day. I believe Mike Tyson is the greatest heavyweight in history. As for lightweight fight. I think it's difficult, Brad. I think it's very difficult to point to evidence for that. As in, maybe you can say you, you see him in the ring. Have him fight ended way. in the first round, my friend. That's evidence enough. I mean, Muhammad Ali used to say he, didn't, he didn't never looked for a first round knockout. And, and to me, as you know, I said throughout the years, to me, a 12 round decision is oftentimes more conclusive than a first round knockout. A first round knockout means you have early rounds power, you can get them out of there early, maybe the opposition isn't that great. First, uh, uh, Tyson does not have a lot of first round knockouts against great opposition. No, if he any. does not. Uh, but Tyson has also proved that he can, he can go 15 rounds, as he did with bon James Bond versus Smith. And although Smith wasn't doing anything that no, was really... No, he couldn't do anything. He was too afraid he, to do anything. He, well, he, he, yeah, it's true, but I mean, he, Tyson was expending energy in the sense that Smith was tying him up, but he wasn't getting put through the ringer. Mike Tyson went 12 rounds with a razor ruddock after the first razor ruddock fight, who subsequently was knocked out by Lennox Lewis and Tommy Morrison. He was, uh, Tyson was extended 12 rounds by Tony Tucker, who was never a great fighter. And uh, imagine a Tony Tucker yeah. with, with more speed and, yeah, and a better offensive arsenal. Then again, then again Muhammad Ali was extended 15 rounds by Chuck Webner. But, but, but I, okay, say, that, Rocky, okay, the, 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 the Mike Tyson that fought Tony Tucker would beat the Muhammad Ali who fought Chuck Webner, probably. But uh, I'm talking about the Muhammad Ali that fought uh, uh, Cleveland Williams and Ernie Terrell. And uh, I don't think Mike Tyson's beating that Ali. I just don't see I don't know. We're going to disagree on that one. But one last thing. You know what lightweight fight I'd love to see? Who's that? Oscar De La Hoya versus Stevie Johnston. That would I, be a terrific it, fight. That would be an interesting fight. I would rather see De La Hoya against Kostatsu. Really? Because I, I think that fight would tell us a lot about both fighters. I would go so far as to say I think Stevie Johnston would beat him. You think so? Yes. Okay. All right. Brad's going out on a limb. But uh, it, it's interesting. It's interesting. All righty. I'll tell you this about Mike getting back to Tyson Ali for one second. 
is, and what I was saying in terms of evidence for it, Mike Tyson has never fought a great fighter in their primes and beaten them. Uh, very fought, few fighters have. But Ali has. Yeah, I know. And but that's Ali why was, when you're talking about the greatest heavyweight of all time. Ali was fortunate to be around in the history of the division where yeah, it was the greatest era of the division in the history of the heavyweight. Let's put it this way. Ali had a four-year layoff, came back and beat Frazier, Foreman, and Norton and won the crown two more times. Won, won back the heavyweight title twice uh, uh, for three, to, to become the first three-time heavyweight champion in history and only to this point, three-time heavyweight champion in history. Mike Tyson has come back, and, and, and Ali's first fight back was against Jerry Quarry. Yeah. His next was against Oscar Bonavina. His next was against Joe Frazier. Yeah. Then people started criticizing him when he was fighting guys like Jimmy Ellis yeah. and Joe Bugner. They started to say, wait a minute, why isn't Ali fighting anybody? Tyson's first fight back was against Peter McNeil. Thanks, thank, you can thank Don King for that. For His nobody second else. fight back was, is against Buster Mathis Jr. You even look at a contemporary heavyweight like Riddick Bowe and see who Bowe's fighting while Tyson's fighting these guys. But while Tyson's fighting McNeely, Bowe's fighting Gonzalez. While Tyson's fighting Buster Mathis Jr., Bowe's fighting Evander Holyfield. Uh, I, yeah, I hear you. You know I what I mean? You. So when, I'm not even convinced that Tyson is the greatest heavyweight of his era yet. I think he has to go out and prove this now. He has to beat Rudy Bo first. Right. He, the, Bo is like Tyson's Frazier. Not stylistically, but in terms of, in terms of uh, their places in history. Uh, Mike Tyson, although Riddick Bowe isn't perceived as monstrous as Joe Frazier was in the early 70s, in the late 60s, early 70s, but, uh, Maham, but Tyson's first reign was much like Ali's first reign except that Tyson lost to Buster Douglas. That's another thing we haven't discussed. Well, you know, listen, Tyson was knocked out in 10 dude. rounds by Buster Douglas, that and Ali the, went out on no, the No, that's an abomination in the fabric of time, man. That is the biggest upset in sporting history. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what if, you take that, if you take that Buster Douglas again, just that Buster Douglas again, putting him, put him in the ring with, let's say, the Mike Tyson at his best that beat uh, uh, Larry Holmes or Tyrell Biggs. Yeah. Maybe Tyson beats Douglas on that night. Maybe he does. Let's say I'll, I, I, I would concede that Tyson would probably decision that Buster Douglas in a very tough fight. We, and that's Buster Douglas on that me, night. And Douglas on that night did not fight as well as Muhammad Ali did against some other fighters. But let me so, tell you uh, something now. We will see Douglas Tyson too. We will see that. That will happen. There's you too think, much. You're oh. saying it will? That's what I've been saying for years. We it's a will huge it. gate. It's a huge gate. And how can Mike Tyson retire without money? It's too much money involved for both men. It's too much money involved. And, 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 and it's impossible. It's imp I think it would be impossible for Tyson to retire without fighting. I agree. Others. Because he has a sense of history. You know that all great champions have, have uh, taken losses off their records. You know Absolutely. That. Brad, I'd love to talk more. I tried to get you in for a while because you haven't been on the air for a minute. Now okay. we've got to get some more. All right. Excellent I'll talk to you next week. All right. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Line four, Max Kellerman, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, Max. Pretty good. Who am I talking to? Ted. Ted, how you doing? Yeah, I just wanted to know, where's, where's um, Michael Nunn? Where is he? Yeah. I Fighting been... at, what is it, light heavyweight now against nobody of significance? Oh, uh, one last question. I wanted to know, being that you know so much about boxing, can you fight yourself? Can I fight myself? Why? You know, you know someone who wants to test it? No, because you look like a herb. I look like a herb. Well, the address is up at the end of the show on the screen. That's all I can say. Appreciate the call. Line two, Max Kellerman, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, Max, this is Gary from Manhattan. Yeah, how you doing, Gary? All right. Listen, now that uh, Don King uh, lost control of the WBC heavyweight champion with uh, Bruno beating... Uh, That's something we haven't discussed yet. That's right, Bruno beating uh, McCall. Oliver McCall. And you predicted last week that... Uh... <laughs> well, let's put it this way. I said last week I'm expecting Bruno gives... He gives a, a hard time to what, whoever he's fighting before he loses. He right. gives his best before he loses. So I was expecting Bruno to give McCall a very difficult time into, until McCall knocked him out. Yeah, that's it, what happens to Bruno. And it was going just like that. In a 15-round fight, Bruno would have been knocked out. It was a 12-round fight. He got a decision not to, not to cop out or anything like that. I was, I was surprised that Bruno made it, to the, the, I'm surprised Bruno made it through the fight. Uh, I think he was fortunate to make it through the fight. And... Uh, I mean, there were a couple times where if McCall just would have landed one right hand, the fight would have been over. He didn't. I was very happy for Frank Bruno. You know, I, I'm glad to see the guy can... Uh, the, I, yeah. I, I imagine what they're, going, what they're like in England right now. They must be going But berserk. you see, my question is, you see Bruno fighting uh, Tyson? Yes, I do, because Bruno's controlled by Don King and Tyson's controlled right, by right, Don Right, right, right. I figured that. Now, uh, check this out. Uh, last week I called about... Uh, uh, call that earlier had mentioned uh, Bill Gallo. Right. Uh, he had uh, published in, uh, like on two Sundays ago in his column that uh, he said that Whitaker had lost to uh, Chavez. Yeah. 
And guess what? I, I guess he must have been watching la- last week's show because he corrected himself this uh, this Sunday. Well, as everyone knows, Pernell Whitaker has never lost. Right, right. He's I an know undefeated that. fighter. Yeah, but my question is, I've been hearing a, a Camacho, I hate the Camacho Whitaker fight. <laughs> it's an interesting fight, and why not? P- Pernell really is safer at this point in his career fighting the Hector Camachos of the world instead of the Ike Cortez of the world. But uh, Camacho, give diff- Camacho gave Trinidad a little hard time for a couple rounds before he, before he started running around the ring. And Whitaker's going to feel uncomfortable coming forward against Camacho. Camacho's going to make Whitaker come forward. Right. Uh, I think he can give Whitaker, I, I, and Whitaker's a, been a slow starter in recent years. I think Camacho will give Whitaker problems for the first couple rounds till the second half of the fight when Purnell starts digging to the body and, and you know, just uh, dissecting him. But uh, I, think, I think Camacho could be maybe even on points. I'll t- tell you round. what, I, I'll pay to see that fight instead of the Tyson McKinley fight. You'd pay to, instead of the Tyson Mathis fight, you mean? No, the Ty- I mean like the, 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 the Tyson McDeal fight. You you'd, know what I mean? You'd rather see a Whitaker Camacho fight. Yeah, yeah. I, so would I. Right. All right. All right. Appreciate Talk to you the next call. Week, all right? Excellent call.